We probably all remember this moment when we were young and sitting at school, asking our teacher, why are we learning these calculations? You always knew you had to do them, but you never knew why you had to do them. And when you were asking your teacher, she'd probably say something like, well, you need them once you get older. You will need them in your job. And um, not knowing why you're learning something is not really motivating. Knowing why you're learning something and actually directly applying what you're learning is far more motivating. And then learning could even become more fun. As Raf Koster, a famous game designer, says, fun is just another word for learning. And apparently this is true, but only under two conditions. The first one being that what you're learning feels useful for you, and the second one is that you can apply it within foreseeable time. And this uh, demotivation doesn't only appear in the classroom, but, on, but also on the work floor. And this is also due to the lack of motivation, the lack of context. Apparently, after research, only 7% of employees fully understand their company's mission and what's expected of them in order to help achieve this mission. So apparently what we need in order to learn or to be able to learn is context. We need to know why we are learning things. This girl here behind me is really concentrated and really motivated, and she's playing a video game. And video games do have this ability of context, so you can learn in games because of the context. But the funny thing is, if we look at video games, and we look at work, and then mainly project-based organizations, we kind of see the same ingredients. There are levels in games, which can, can be translated as job titles. There are score and points in games, which might be salary in real life. And the guild leader in the game could be the project manager on the work floor. And there are more similarities. So if these ingredients are kind of the same, why are people willing to pay to play games? And do we need to pay people to work? Well, actually, because work is just a very bad design game. Because in work, often overall or individual goals are not clear. There's often a lack of feedback on the things you do. And there is often a mismatch between the things you can do and the things you need to do. And sometimes you don't have the feeling of being in control. And games do possess these features. And one of those games who possesses these features is World of Warcraft, a very, very popular online role-playing game. World of Warcraft has millions of players all around the world, and players play on an average of 22 hours per week. That's a part-time job. And the skills required to play this game are actually about the same skills required to do work in these project-based organizations. And not only entertainment games are, are useful for uh, businesses, also games developed directly for businesses are, uh, are being used, such as training games. Here an example of a training game uh, used for supermarket personnel to train them how to, how to work. And sometimes these uh, business games are getting so good, they end up at being very popular entertainment games. This game is uh, a game for recruiting soldiers for the American army. And this game can be played online freely at their website, and is actually an immensely popular entertainment game. So these are all games about reality. These are games who have a beginning and an end. Once you play the game, you're in the game. Once you finish play the game, you're back in reality. So about reality. But what if we would cross this reality line? What if we would use those gaming elements that can make games so engaging and motivating and put them in real life? Well, then we get to this thing called gamification. Gamification is all about applying game elements or game techniques into non-game context, so real life. So what do we get? Well, let's look at two examples which are already being used in two organizations. For instance, Salesforce, which is a CRM application, uh, and Salesforce uh, is trying to motivate employees to generate more leads and eventually generate more sales. 
or play call, a dashboard for call center employees to motivate them to do better in what they do. And these are all games in reality. So these games do not have a beginning and an end. You just do what you do in real life, but get a far better understanding of how good you're doing them. But what if we would, uh, what if we would dig a little deeper? Because what we see is that the games in reality are always a little bit easy. Often these game elements are applied on top of a certain product or service. And often they're applied onto situations where there is already a lot of quantifiable data. So these employees already have experience competing. So what if we would use these game principles to redesign the more soft side of society? How would that look? Well, we already know, I already told, that the ingredients of, work and ga and of games and work are about the same. So would it be possible to shuffle these ingredients work has and redesign them in such a way that it becomes really motivating and engaging for all those employees to work? Would it be possible to have the next CEO of a major firm be the next guild leader? IBM did a research about leadership in online games, in these online role-playing games, and they were wondering if it would be possible to um, apply these leadership um, elements from games into work. What they found was interesting, because leadership in games is very temporary. Leadership can last for months, sometimes days, or even up to minutes. And leadership is chosen on the basis of experience suited for a task. So the, the, the person who is doing a certain task the best is getting leadership for, for performing that task. And skills and competence of members is very transparent. So everybody knows at all times who's, who's good in doing what. And there's a lot of trust because of an open incentive system. So everybody knows at all times who's getting what for performing a certain mission. And failure is accepted in games. Although risk is seen as a part of being a leader, but the, the costs of failure are seen as risk management. So I place this notion of games as reality on the third level. So although we use game principles in real life, it doesn't really feel like a game. So games as reality. But where to start? I mean, this is a future vision. There are no companies yet who will apply these. So let's start with the people living in this future. Let's start with the children at schools nowadays. Could we change education so school will become more motivating and engaged for these students? Well, the first signs are already there. Games are already being played in the classroom. Single-player games, but also multiplayer games, where complete classes are playing together. And these work really well. And these are all games about reality. And the first signs of games in reality are, all, are also already here. For instance, the Khan Academy are using game principles, but also a school in New York called Quest to Learn. They are using game principles already in their learning material. But what if we would really change schools? What if we change the appearance of schools and how schools would work? So how would that look? Well, I don't know exactly how it would look, but I do know some of the ingredients. But I see a future of education, where students can learn at their own pace, where the learning material they're getting is adaptive, where they're getting feedback at that moment when they need it, where failure is accepted because they're, they're learning in a safe environment, where there could be levels instead of classes, or there could be points instead of grades. But most of all, where there is context in the things they learn. Because it would be great if our children don't have to ask why are we learning these calculations, but that they already know why. Thank you. <laughs>